So good morning, uh, Hon Hun uh, and colleagues. Uh, first, let me uh, offer my heartiest congratulations to the winners of the OEA and ATEA, and also uh, register my sincere thanks uh, to Hwan Hun and her committees who have proud through tons and tons of papers, right, uh, in order to shortlist and identify, you know, the within, uh, winning colleagues. Uh, I thought I'll take the opportunity uh, to share with you uh, an, a recent initiative by the university. And you probably would have heard uh, the president announcing it and me giving a short description. So I thought I'll take the opportunity to share with you uh, a new initiative, uh, which I think the president has announced during the university awards ceremony. Uh, this is the teaching academy. Uh, let me just briefly give you a history of this and uh, what are the aims and objectives uh, for the teaching academy. A little bit of background. Uh, this idea was first broached by a task force comprising of Choi Heng uh, Daphne, who was previously the director of CDTL, as well as Mohanan and Alex Yip and Eleanor Wong from law faculty. Uh, they were studying actually a repositioning of the Center for Teaching and Learning, Center for Development of Teaching and Learning, or CDTL. So there was actually quite a lot of uh, discussions, internal and external, and uh, it became apparent that you know, this is really a very worthwhile uh, initiative. After that, I think a working committee was put in place, led by Huang, Huang Kun, and members of the working committee comprised Johan, Kai Chi, uh, Chong Hao. So they put up and they flesh out a, a sort of a proposal to implement the teaching academy. And this was actually discussed again at several levels. Uh, we also have actually rounds of discussions with uh, winners of the OEA. And finally, I think uh, that was made a reality uh, last week. Now, teaching academies are not really uh, new. Uh, they have been in existence, um, notably in medical schools. So if you look at Harvard, if you look at Columbia, and you look at uh, UCSF, right? they have actually teaching academies in their medical schools. But there are also other teaching academies, like in Toronto and in Boston and U UNC. Right? So this is not a new idea. Uh, the key is really how to implement this. Uh, what are some of the aims and objectives of the teaching academy? I think key to this is really to foster a culture of teaching excellence. Right? Here, I think it reinforces NUS commitment that we really value, all right, and value the quality of education that we provide. The Teaching Academy is also a very important platform where we recognize our very best teachers who have actually contributed significantly, right, to NUS education. And further to that, I think we want to leverage on their expertise uh, for the common good. Right? So the, the aims are actually fairly uh, simple. Now the structure, we want it to have a very independent structure. Right? It should not, in a sense, like be directed by the provost's office. I think it could be too bureaucratic. So we want it to you know, uh, be run more like a bottom-up uh, organization. So uh, we would want an executive council to be elected amongst the uh, teaching fellows. Uh, they will be able to guide the direction of the teaching academy. And we envisage that perhaps at steady stage, maybe about 30 academy members, uh, that should be enough. Uh, each one would serve a three-year term, right? And that provides the sort of renewal that is pretty essential for the academy. We want fresh people to come in. We want fresh ideas. And uh, the first group of 18, they were inducted last Friday. Uh, we are really grateful to the 18 uh, previous formal uh, OEA uh, awardees uh, who have actually willingly stepped forward to help the university. And from next year onwards, uh, we will make a call to faculty members uh, who may be interested, and the council will have a process to screen 
and to induct new members into the teaching academy. Right? And secretarial work will be provided by the CDTL. Now, what would uh, the duties of the fellows be? Uh, this would be in line with the aims and objectives of the teaching academy. So we can envisage that the fellows of the teaching academy, they would in a sense be like the wise men, right, when teaching is concerned. So they would be able to give the provost office and the university wise advice on how we should go ahead, uh, go, I mean, go about doing things. For instance, I think there could be some university initiatives. Our president has uh, mentioned and articulated the global Asia focus. How can we do this? All right? And hopefully, I think the teaching academy could provide and could give us a guide on how we can actually push this particular uh, uh, focus across the entire university. And there, there are also existing processes which are actually very critical to our quality assurance framework, to our assessment of teaching, to our quality control. Right? So this will be uh, processes like peer reviews, processes like teaching assessment. Uh, it will be useful, I think, for the teaching academy members on a periodic basis to review some of this and to enhance the system. Now, we also hope that uh, members can also engage in research in pedagogy and educational issues. So these are some sort of very broad ideas on what we envisage teaching fellows to do. Now, what are some benefits? Uh, frankly, I think the, a lot of our colleagues would want to join the teaching academy because of their passion for teaching and their hope to actually enhance the level of teaching across the university. But, you know, we also want to put in some little benefits. So uh, we want to allow some of them, not all of them at, at the same time, but some of them to take leave from their department uh, to do some work for the academy. So it could be a serious project that the academy decides to do. And maybe five or six teaching fellows, all right, academy fellows uh, can be take, take, take can take leave from their department and concentrate on such work. Uh, there will be a top up in the performance bonus for the uh, fellows affiliated to the academy. And again, this would be uh, commensurate with the contributions that uh, they have given during the period under review. Now, of course, not forgetting that there will be support uh, in terms of resources, in terms of secretary work from the CDTL. Uh, especially on educational initiatives led by the academy fellows. So these are, again, very generic sort of benefits uh, for the fellows. Now these are the 18 uh, fellows who have been inducted. I want to register uh, on behalf of the university our sincere thanks for, you know, for them to step forward and uh, to volunteer so as to say, they are the, like the guinea pigs, right, of this new en endeavor. Now, I, to me, I think the teaching academy is a very important counterpoint for promoting teaching and learning in a research-intensive university like ours, all right? And uh, I think we hope that the teaching academy will be a symbol of the standard uh, of educational excellence that I think NUS would be proud of, right? So thank you very much, and I'm sure you will enjoy the lectures by the two OEA winners. Have a good morning. Thank you. <laughs>